Welcome back, everyone, to the Beginner to Master Arts Speedrun, episode number 31. Coming into today, rated 1396, so hopefully I can break 1400 today. Uh, also coming in on a 100 game win streak, so we will try and keep it going. And let's just hop into things. All right, first opponent playing Raphist. Uh, I'll play e4. Opponent's rated 1440. And we have a Karo Khan. I'll go for the two knights attack. I did play this in a very recent episode. I think it was the, the previous episode. Um, this time, my opponent is not playing bishop f5, which is a typical mistake. Knight f6 is uh, probably the main line these days. And there's a few ways to deal with this. Uh, of course, taking is fine. I think a common mistake that some players make is knight g3, which loses time and sometimes walks into h5. Uh, there's another move here, which I'll go ahead and play. The uh, move is queen e2. And generally, it's not great to put the queen here to block the bishop. But in this case, yeah, the knights get traded and the queen is centralized. The bishop will be able to develop soon. So. Uh, maybe after the game I can explain the opening in a bit more detail. But going forward from here, I think position is actually like very pleasant to play. White has more space, have the two bishops that can develop easily. And Black's light squared bishop is now a bit stuck, especially given that e6 was played. So with knight d7, Black is going for knight f6, which I can't really stop. So I think I'll just keep developing bishop d3. And then if knight f6, yeah, I have to figure out where to put the queen. Uh, queen h4 is definitely one option. Uh, it could walk into trouble after bishop e7. And then like bishop g5, h6, probably don't want to deal with that. So I think I'm just more comfortable playing queen e2. Just making sure the queen is safe, still centralized. And then later I can determine where to put the bishop. So we see bishop e7. Yeah, bishop g5 has less of, kind of less venom to it. It's not actually pinning the knight. You could easily walk into h6. Now it is a question here, which side do I want to castle? Like I could castle kingside right away. Or maybe I can consider casting queenside, especially if black wants to castle kingside, then I could potentially make the position a bit sharper. So it's really a choice between committing the king or committing the bishop. Looking for other options. I mean, bishop f4 looks like a natural developing move. But that could walk into knight d5, and then black gains time on my bishop. Another move to consider here is c3, just to be solid and kind of put the ball back in black's court. Yeah, I'm realizing that as fun as it would be to castle queenside, my king is probably just safer on the king side. And I think I'm better off delaying developing the bishop just to see what black does. So I'll castle kingside, playing a bit more solidly. And if black castles kingside, then it's still very possible I can go for a kingside attack. Because with my bishop, I mean, basically all my pieces, all my minor pieces having potential to attack on the kingside. Black does castle. So, yeah, I'm looking at bishop f4, allowing knight d5, and then simply bishop g3. And I think it's very likely I can expand with c4 and pick the knight if it does go to d5. If knight goes here, I can... Imagine I can avoid the trade, like maybe bishop c4 and then c3. So, yeah, let's go for bishop f4. 
And this started as a, an E4 opening, but it kind of resembles a London setup. And usually these are the squares for the minor pieces in the London. Okay, black plays b6. So probably looking to play bishop b7 and eventually c5. Now, how do I want to keep improving? I mean, c4 definitely gains space. Could also start with a, a rook move. There's also knight e5, which looks active and aggressive. I think I'll start with rook ad1, though. I like the rook aligned with the queen. Like, even though the file is not open for me, this move essentially discourages, I was going to say, it discourages black from playing c5 because of this x ray vision. And I think c5 is just a pretty big tactical mistake from black. I can take, and if black takes back, I'm going to have bishop takes h7, winning the queen. So yeah, this is going downhill very quickly for black. I think they were just not aware of the danger. Take the queen. It still takes work, because I mean, what just happened? I won queen and pawn for rook and bishop. So I'm up material, but black can still try and fight. I'm debating whether to play rook d1 here. It's still a matter of trying to find the optimal squares for my pieces. Uh, there's an interesting trick to play b4, and if takes, I have queen e4 hitting the bishop and rook. But not sure if that's actually the most productive move. b4, bishop e7. Can I play queen e4 immediately? Almost trapping the rook. But there is bishop a6 defending and attacking. I should probably move a little bit more quickly here. I'm looking at knight g5 too, just to perhaps induce some trades. Also get some initiative. I kind of like knight g5 actually. Because I'm threatening to take and then fork. And if takes, I take back, I hit the rook. Really just trying to simplify and also slow down Black's development of the c8 bishop and the a8 rook. And if Black plays f6, that can weaken e6. So we'll see what Black does. And I am down a bit of time, so it should be upping the pace. I mean, maybe now I can play b4, setting up the trap. And gain space. Let's go for it. And say, oh no, my pawn. I mean, there should be alarm bells going off for black. That, um, Yeah, there, there's a reason for giving away the pawn. But OK, black takes a bait. I'm hoping I didn't overlook anything. But yeah, the rook and bishop are attacked. And there's really no way to save both things. If the b-pawn wasn't here, there'd be rook b8, but that's not the case. So it seems like my opponent just fell victim to the, the basic tactical combinations this game. And sometimes that's what it takes to win at this rating level. Okay, black resigns. I mean, very often you just have to be patient, put your pieces on good squares, and then wait for the tactical opportunities. Um, doesn't always happen this easily. Of course, black should have uh, been a bit more careful here. Maybe start with bishop to b7, and then life would go on. I'd probably look to play rook e1 or knight e5 or move the c-pawn. Uh, there would be a lot of ways for white to keep improving. Um, we see eval bar here. Yeah, white's a little bit better, but um, yeah, it's still playable for black. Now, before I go on to the next game, I do want to give... Just a quick opening lesson, because this is a main line against the two knights attack. And queen e2, I believe, is like the trendiest move at top level play. Like you'll see a lot of Grandmaster games feature this move. And there is a cute idea that if black plays knight d7 to reinforce the knight on f6, it's white to move maiden 1. Uh, this is game over. Not every day you can smother mate the king in the center like this. But uh, yeah, knight d7, not a playable move for black. 
Uh, the main line is to take and then take. And rather than playing e6, what my opponent played, the best move here is queen d5, just offering the queen trade. And if takes takes, then the position's pretty close to level. So if my opponent did this, I would have played either queen e3 or queen f4. I think the main line is queen f4. Black still tries to trade queens with queen f5, and then queen e3. And then after queen e6, I think there's still a lot of grandmaster games. Black forces a queen trade, but then white can develop. Uh, b3 is nice to play bishop b2, and it's a playable position from here. So it's a good line to know if you play the Carol Khan as black or as white, just to, to get a game going forward. So uh, good start to the episode. I've officially broken 1400. Let's keep it going. Play another game, playing Nick Kiev. And how about I play a Carol Khan? I'll, I'll play the same opening my opponent just played. Are we gonna see a two knights? Are we gonna see an alien gambit? Oh dear, what is this? I've never seen this move before, knight e5. There's a variation in the Carol Khan called the, I think it's called the Apocalypse Attack, which features takes, takes, and then knight e5. But is this one of these weird like TikTok traps? There's a lot of like dubious openings that people make TikToks about. I think I can just take the pawn. I mean, am I scared of bishop c4 or just e6? Queen h5, I have g6. Okay, let's uh, let's call white's bluff. There is a funny line, queen h5, g6, and then bishop c4. White can say, oh no, my queen, and then try and mate me. But yeah, I won't allow that to happen. I think e6 is the way to go here. There's really not too many ways to defend f7. Queen d4 could be worth considering, but I don't want to really make a mess of that position. So yeah, let's go for e6. I'm up a pawn. Even though white's ahead in development, I mean, both these pieces can be attacked pretty easily. Like bishop d6 comes with tempo, e5, queen d4. Seems like there will be a decent number of resources for black. Okay, white's offering the trade of pawns. Uh, but with this move, I'm pretty sure I can win a full piece. Um, it's a nice tactical pattern, which I'll admit I didn't see right away, but because white's opened the diagonal to the king, the knight's undefended on e5. The move that sticks out is queen a5 check. And I think it's white who's falling for my opening trap. And usually the Carol Khan is just like a solid opening where there's not too many like tactical traps for black. But uh, yeah, whenever you're given the opportunity for tactics, you should, uh, you should definitely pounce. So winning a piece on move six. And white's now offering the b2 pawn. Do I want to be greedy? I mean, when life gives you free food, I think you just take it. Just have to make sure it's not poison. And bishop c3 would save the rook, but then there's queen c1 check. Actually, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not move too quickly here, because there's also bishop b4. It reminds me of a, there's a trap in the England Gambit where you see this exact same idea with the bishop on c3 attacking the queen and defending the rook, and the black can respond with bishop e4. And then if takes, and then I take the rook. Not so sure about that line though. I think I'd rather just simplify. Even though bishop e4, it's probably a completely fine move. Maybe objectively the best move. I'm already up a piece. There's no reason to muddy the waters. Um, yeah, this forces queen d1. And then I can take. 
and then trade pawns. And I'll actually be up, uh, what, a knight and two pawns in this position. Of course, I don't want to develop the bishop and lose my pawn and then rook, so I'll play knight f6 first. And I still kind of have this typical Karo Khan setup. I mean, the bishop is blocked, but uh, life is, is very good here. And going forward, I think I just want to get my pieces to happier squares. I mean, I could start with b5. I might as well expand. Gives a square for the bishop on b7. Maybe eventually I can play bishop b7 and c5. I'm kind of torn between this move, this move, and this move. Or even this move. I think all the moves are acceptable here. I'll play bishop d6. Perhaps look to castle the king. Or maybe even king e7. Okay, white challenging my b-pawn. So... I don't have to move it, it is defended. But yeah, b4 looks attractive. That way I prevent the a file from opening, attack the bishop. I don't mind the double pawns here. This is actually a pretty solid structure. And let's uh let's keep developing. White wants to play this or this to harass the bishop and maybe the pawn. So I like the idea of bishop a6. So if knight c4, I don't mind trading. And let's keep developing. If knight e4. Yeah, there's a few ways to save the bishop. Now the pawn's defended, so really just a matter of what to do with this bishop. I could play king e7. I could play bishop e5. Bishop e5 looks nice, actually. Hitting the rook. And then probably want to play f5 next. Expand and kick the knight. And my bishop's defended by the knight here, so yeah, there's no, no worries. Now is there another tactic? Because with the knight on g5, it's not defended. I have the move bishop f4, yeah, very simply hitting the, the rook and the knight. And maybe white's going to try and sack on e6 or f7. But this is looking very, very good. Yeah, it takes on e6. That's probably the best try. I'll take back. The king will get a little bit more naked, but it's still pretty well sheltered. Yeah, in d8, it's, it's hard for white to exploit. So now I'm up... How many things? I'm up two minor pieces. Rook d1 is played. I mean, this move comes to mind as a way to like, try and fork and simplify. My pawn is hanging on c6. So maybe it makes sense to defend first. King c7. I'll play king c7. I think this is a safer move. And with this move, I also connect the rooks, which can be very useful. Um, preparing rook e8, basically. Let's retreat the bishop. The king does a nice job of basically defending everything it's next to. If I get the chance, looks like I will have the chance to play knight c5, and this will induce some trades. I'm trying to show no mercy here. Pawn is attacked. I'm up two full bishops here, so and there's probably a lot of ways to convert the position. I like the move rook f8. 
just making sure white can't can't win anything. I'll play rook f7, keeping h7 defended. Yeah, sometimes these sort of positions, it just requires uh, patience. Have to do a, a decent amount of blunder checking just with every move, ensuring white can't win anything. Uh, white is maybe trying to create the battery on the sixth rank. So, I mean, can I win the pawn? Rook e6, I can defend with rook to e8. Oh, wait a minute. If I take the pawn, there's rook d1. Yeah, this is why you should blunder check. But rook d1, there's bishop f8. Counterattacking the rook. I think that's fine, actually. The d pawn's a nice pawn to win. And it's true that maybe white could take here and then play rook d1. Okay, white goes for this move, so... Yeah, this is just a simple defense. And there's only so much the rooks can do in this position. I'll go for bishop e4, setting up the, the tactic of bishop d5. Yeah, sometimes when it rains, it pours. It's been pouring with tactics on Mike's position, so. Looks like I got a, a nice handful of tactics that game. Um, I mean, it all started really out of the opening with uh, with Queen A5 check. So D3 was was a blunder. I mean, this this opening. I, I wonder if this was my opponent mixing things up, or if they maybe have studied this and there's some trap that I'm unaware of. Uh, but the only thing I can think of here was uh yeah it was white starting with queen h5 i would have played g6 and then white can play bishop c4 and it's a very like elementary trap but uh yeah of course the point is oh no my queen and then checkmate so if white played bishop c4 i think i would have played e6 just to defend and i mean that's interesting white has Few things developed. Would have to move the queen here, probably queen back to e2. Can try and regain the pawn. But I think I would be happy here. Knight f6 simply defending, and black's gonna be very solid and likely still be up a pawn. So another clean game, uh, another game determined by tactics pretty early on. And again, I think that's really the key to beating players around this rating level is to be solid and patient and wait for the, the tactics to arise in the position. So let's do at least one more. A new 10 minute game. Playing chess hair 37. And we have an opening that honestly I don't think I've encountered yet in the speedrun. This is a Reti opening, knight f3 and g3. So this could transpose into various things. I'm just going to play a pretty normal setup. Um, there are a bunch of different setups you can play against this. A c5 is maybe the most active move. You can play a reverse London with bishop f5. Sometimes that will run into d3, and yeah, the bishop can be undermined. So I'll play what I've played for many years, which is pawn e6. And it is a little bit more passive because I block in the bishop, but the point is to eventually fiend out of the bishop and then try and challenge the light square diagonal. So I'll keep going here with bishop e7. Um, bishop is usually preferred here rather than d6. Uh, if I move it to d6, then it just stares at white's very solid pawn chain. So um, also if I move it to d6, white has ideas of e4, e5. But white's going for c4, so this is definitely a, a common pawn break. Exerting pressure on d5 combines well with the bishop. So I don't have to take and just leave the pawn here. It's very well defended. And I think I will go for pawn b6. Always have to be careful playing this move when there's x-ray vision against the rook. But uh, there's no way for white to exploit it. And I'll be ready to play bishop b7. This move. 
And white is trying to build up pressure with the pawn, the queen, maybe even the knight. Of course, the bishop as well. But I have so many things defending d5. One of the benefits of this setup. So white develops to g5. So yeah, I think I just want to develop the knight here. Uh, knight d7 looks pretty routine. And I'm actually completing like the the quintessential setup of this opening. It kind of it's kind of reminiscent of a Queen's Gambit decline setup. Or this is usually where the pieces like to go. And it's very solid. I mean, there's basically no weaknesses for black in this position. Yeah, f6 I can take with the bishop or the knight. Taking with the knight is probably a bit more natural. But there's definitely merit to taking with the bishop. Because I put the bishop on the long diagonal. I would also preserve knight c5 to harass the queen. Yeah, let's take with the bishop. And there was definitely benefits to taking with the knight to reinforce d5. But I like the prospect of I mean, basically having the, the crisscross of the bishops. I mean, even though this bishop isn't technically fianchettoed, it controls the long diagonal. And I think going forward, it'll have very good central control. And now knight c5 can come with tempo against the queen. Let's go for this. I'm also unleashing my own queen. Now, I guess there are some drawbacks with having the knight here, as white can potentially play this or this later to attack the knight. Yeah, it is a question, like what to do next. I mean, we're keeping this pawn tension. I could consider taking, which unleashes this bishop. I don't think I want to push the pawn, like even though this gains space. It would block this bishop, it would allow for b4, and then my knight would have to retreat most likely. So there's a few moves that come to mind here. Uh, queen e7 looks like a very natural improving move. Simply connecting the rooks, probably preparing rook d8. There's also a5, which maybe looks random, but the idea is to discourage pawn b4 uh, in the event of white moving the rook and then preparing b4. Yeah, I think it's a question between a5 or queen e7. Should also keep in mind what white wants to do next. If I play either of these moves, then white can maybe go for d4. And then I have to figure out what to do with my knight. Like, can I actually afford to play knight e4? Because there's a line like takes and takes and knight d2, and, and my pawn can get weak. Oh, but then I win the d4 pawn. So I think it's okay. I'm going to start with queen e7. I'm not really in a rush to play a5. b4 I don't think works for white because I take the rook. So white goes for d4. And now, yeah, do I want to go for this? Knight e4. And it's a pretty concrete line. Because white has the forcing option of taking, and then I take. And then I could branch out. Like, there's knight e5 as well. Yeah, my pawn is maybe just too weak in that variation. So, yeah, maybe it's better just to move back. Yeah, not allowing the, the trade or the transformation of the structure. Not the happiest move to play, but I think it's still very solid for black. It's possible I just should not have gone for knight c5 in the first place. Like, white lost time moving the queen a couple times, but I lost time moving the knight. But the nice thing about having the knight here is it will support pawn c5. And it's a very thematic pawn break for this structure, which I can probably play right away. Like it's already pretty well supported. And it's possible that if takes, I would take with knight. 
I guess then b4 could happen. So if white takes all, I'll decide what to take back with. Yeah, because queen takes is another option. It would feel a little bit wrong to take with the knight, allow b4, and then have to retreat again. My knight is moving back and forth like a pendulum. That's not the worst thing ever. Like, if I take with queen, there's also b4. <laughs> and then queen e7 might be the best move. Then there's also queen c7. I'm going to take with queen. I feel like after b4, I at least have a few more options to consider. And with the c-file opening, I mean, I want to get a rook to c8 as soon as possible. I have been taking a lot more time than my opponent. I'll play queen c7. Just ensuring I'm defending the bishop. Because there are cases where the diagonal opens and I want my bishop defended. And I'm maintaining the pin on the c-file. If white plays rook c1, I'll quickly play rook c8. And tension is mounting though. The c-file tension, there's pawn tension, there's bishop tension. Very tense position. And I will say, my opponent's playing like very, very well for the rating level. Played a very solid opening, has a good setup with the pieces. Really done nothing wrong so far. And I'm trying to also be solid and just get a, a healthy setup. It's possible with this move, I might tuck the queen away to b8. Like if white's queen moves to d1, white would be threatening to take with the discovery. So then my queen will probably have to get out of the way. h4. That's kind of a random move, but I do see white's point. White wants to play this and then checkmate me. So it might be worth playing h6. I mean, I should at least take a moment to determine, can I take the pawn? Allowing this and then take. A lot of trades can happen. I might be up a pawn in that line, though. Yeah, I'm going to take. I don't think it it makes sense to play h6 when this isn't the deadliest threat. Like, as long as I have a, a plan in mind against knight g5. I mean, this is a typical move when, um, when white's being kettled and has a queen here, black's castled. Uh, sometimes white does look to go for some kingside attack. But white simply recaptures. And now the move that sticks out is pawn b5. Because the knight is somewhat pinned. And I'm running low on time, so let's go for b5. There is knight e3 to help defend. So it's possible I'm not winning any material. It's looking good though, because let's imagine knight e3. I take the queen. Oh, white doesn't move the knight. Okay, so I can take the knight or take the bishop. I think I'll take the bishop first. After the game, I can show what could have happened if white played knight e3 there. But that's a very nice transformation. White never got the mate threat in. And now I'm up a piece. And again, I think like all the games today have, have had a similar theme of just being solid in the opening and then pouncing on the tactical opportunity. In this case, it was b5 and using the c-file pin. And can I continue to use a c-file pin? I have this move. And now there's three attackers against the knight on c4. And now if white plays knight e3 to try and defend, I have queen b7, discovered attacking the queen with my rook, and hitting the king. And that would win a queen. But instead white is giving me the knight. Okay, so I'm up two minor pieces now. 
and actually winning more material. Be up a, a rook and a bishop. And plenty of time. Um, I was getting low there, but it's plenty of time to convert this position. Uh, if I want to, I could trade queens. Yeah, why not? Make it simple. And white's fighting on. Which makes sense when you have the time advantage. On the rook too. I'll try and be efficient here. Putting the rook on the second rank. Um, I might as well... Yeah, I might as well make Luft for the king. Just making sure there's no back rank mates. The next move, I'll probably go for rook a2 and start trying to win the pawns. Okay, white defends. So change of plans. Instead of trying to win these pawns, I'm going to try and win this pawn. Plan is rook cc2. And white can't really advance. You get b6 I take, if a5 I take. King e4. Um, well, now maybe there's no reason to play rook cc2. I think I'll just take on f2. It does allow a5. Oh, do I have a mating nut? There's a funny mating nut here. I think I'm going to go for it. It's rook d8. Allowing white to push, it does look maybe a little bit scary. But the plan is to play bishop c3. Attacking the rook, but more importantly threatening maiden 1 with pawn f5. It's really nice having the rooks cutting off the king on the f and the d file. f5 is now actually made in 2. Only legal moves to take, and then I'll take back. So, not the most common mating pattern. A nice quick way to finish this ending. And that brings me to 1421. And I think that game was definitely the most difficult today. I mean, my opponent played at a very high level for the first half of this game. I mean, the ready does have a very solid reputation. And, I mean, they developed, they got their pieces to very good squares. I think d4 was a very fine move. And then things kind of went wrong for white. Perhaps around here, like h4 was a creative idea. And after I took, I think white had to be very, very careful here. The two moves to try and defend were knight a3 or knight e3 to support c2. Uh, the line I was calculating, let's say knight e3, I was going to take. And then if knight takes, I was going to play bishop e4 and try and exploit the pin. Um, but maybe it's it's survivable for white. White has knight e1, and like it's passive, but white's holding on to everything. There's another line. If rook takes in a similar fashion, I would take, take, and then bishop e4. And yeah, again, there's knight e1. So yeah, maybe black's slightly better, but it would have been playable for white. And from white's perspective, I mean, they should have uh, perhaps taken a bit more time here before playing this move and just just have searched for other defensive ideas. But nice clean game. Hopefully some lessons to take away for my opponent and for the viewers. I think I'll end it there. So thanks so much, everyone, for watching. If you have questions, leave them below. If you like the content, do subscribe. It does help the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.